So, over the past month, I've got to say that there's been a litany of conflicting, odd, and downright not new rumors flying around regarding Intel's upcoming CPU launches. To the point that I do think I have to say something, and say it right now. But don't worry, this video isn't just about clarifying recent rumors from other sources. A lot of what I'm going to say today is new, including key details about the upper performance estimates of Raptor Lake Refresh. But first, before I get to that, I do think I need to go through some facts quickly to set the stage and dispel a lot of the confusion out there so that you viewers watching this video understand why Raptor Lake Refresh kind of needs to be above average, not just some tiny little speed bump. And we're going to start with a leak I did last year confirming a few things. Number one, I confirmed that Meteor Lake was planned for late 2023 and that its Redwood Cove architecture would bring a large IPC and efficiency increase to laptop and hopefully to desktop. Though over the past few months that hopefully to desktop tag has become less and less hopeful as it's become more and more clear that it's not going to be an impressive desktop launch if it happens and most likely it's not going to happen at all in lieu of accelerating Lion Cove in Arrow Lake, which again, this 8 plus 16 configuration that's going to use TSMC's 3 nanometer node, I leaked that last year, in fact, and I've actually checked with some sources today to confirm if anything's really changed, and the answer is not really. Like was stated last year, Arrow Lake S utilizes TSMC 3 nanometer, and it's targeting a 22 to 34 percent IPC increase over Redwood Cove. And that currently, though, they're still hoping to use Intel's 20A node for laptop variants. However, an interesting development is coming out here that resources are being pulled away from Arrow Lake Mobile to ensure that Arrow Lake Desktop stays on track in 2024, and that Arrow Lake Desktop, that's the 8 plus 16 model, is now. Now the main priority well the 6 plus 8 mobile variant is losing priority and in fact the arrow lake u variant seems to be outright cancelled but that's not really an odd decision that they're making here because meteor lake will be out by then in high volume and lunar lake should also launch in 2024 that is next year for ultra thin mobile as well so they don't really need arrow lake u Anyways, which yeah, on that note of Lunar Lake, let's go back to the leak from last year and finish this resummarization. Lunar Lake comes out shortly after Arrow Lake Desktop focusing on ultra thin mobile and that will be followed about a year ish or more later by panther lake that's supposed to be another giant performance increase just like air lake was and then nova lake's supposed to fall after that and be impressive but i really don't know enough about it or even if i did it's really not worth leaking yet because things can change when it's that far out and so well yeah there we go we're done resummarizing the current status of intel's roadmap and i do apologize for going back to previous leaks to kind of try to set the story straight but to the salty boys that I'm sure are already in the comments, clawing their eyes out over the fact that I referenced previous leaks, sometimes I have to when a bunch of bullshit is circulating, like things suggesting that Arrow Lake is a rebrand or refresh of Meteor Lake. It's not. It's its own thing. All of these things are their own thing. Arrow Lake, Lunar Lake, Panther Lake, they're their own architectures that are going to bring huge performance increases but they're over a year away. And because they're all over a year away, all these impressive architectures, Intel needs good things on mobile and desktop this fall, or they're in a lot of trouble. You see, from what I am hearing by poking around with retailers and a couple people at AMD, AMD's main focus this year really is on taking server market share from Intel with Genoa. They're just going to keep pumping out Genoa, focusing on Genoa. Yes, neglecting Threadripper to do it, but that's their focus, taking server market share. But what that means is they're just still going to have a decent amount of yields that aren't good enough for Genoa, aren't low power enough, and need to be sold on desktop. And that doesn't really matter to AMD. This isn't a major focus for them compared to server. So because it's not a major focus, they'll lower the pricing on Zen 4 to keep that volume moving if they need to. And so it's not going to be enough is what I'm trying to get to for Intel to just have some minor bump this fall on desktop because that minor bump might be competing with Zen 4 that still probably wins at gaming it uses half the energy and might have further steep discounts. Discounts, by the way, to entice people to upgrade to AM5 this fall as they prepare 
for Zen 5. And so Intel just needs something. And, well, let, let, let's just start getting into the new information then, shall we? First, before I get to the Raptor Lake refresh, I think it's much more important for me to go through what I can update you on with Meteor Lake. And as you're about to see, it's because this Meteor Lake information will lead into why the Raptor Lake refresh is likely to be a bit better than some people may be expecting. But anyways, let's get through this first. So one source who's at an OEM tells me that their desktop roadmap to this day, and this person's informed me of this before in other leaks, just says that they're going to get a Raptor Lake refresh for the next 12 months on desktop. No Meteor Lake is mentioned, suggesting that at a minimum to OEMs, they're not planning to have some LGA 1851 Meteor Lake product anytime soon. Another source tells me that while they can't comment on configurations, they can confirm that the Intel 4 node data they have seen suggests that Redwood Cove and Meteor Lake should boost well past 4 gigahertz. Uh, this person doesn't know what the upper limit is yet, but that they are warning that nobody should buy into rumors that Meteor Lake is limited to 3 gigahertz or something silly. So while it might not come to desktop, it doesn't sound like a complete bust on laptop. And in fact, another source, one of my best ones, tells me that Meteor Lake is targeting a paper launch of the 6 plus 8 laptop configuration by October. This is something Intel is trying to improve, but right now, it honestly sounds like you really shouldn't expect high volume of Meteor Lake until maybe CES next year, and because of that, any hopes of Meteor Lake S uh, actually coming to desktop is just more evidence that it's incredibly unlikely. It's all hands on deck to make sure Meteor Lake comes out as soon as possible for laptop, and the higher core count models don't seem to be in progressing in development at all. And uh, a fourth source actually added something quite interesting that leads into the Raptor Lake information. So this source tells me that they've only heard Intel reps tell them that 14th gen is mentioned for Meteor Lake. Anytime this person asks Intel reps about a Meteor Lake desktop generation, they sidestep the question. But then they tell this person that a new generation is coming to desktop this fall with notably better multi-threading, but they won't confirm if it's going to be designated as new 13th gen products or as some kind of a refresh that's labeled as 14th gen. And so, yeah, there you go. Basically, the way I would summarize Meteor Lake, the situation around it, is that Redwood Cove itself sounds like a great architecture that's going to be fantastic if Intel can get it to hit 5 gigahertz. I can't confirm it will yet, but it's not going to be limited to 3 gigahertz or something. This isn't an Ice Lake situation. That's good news. The bad news? Meteor Lake really does sound like it's basically paper launching late this year, and we'll be lucky if we get good availability of Meteor Lake before CES, which Intel is trying to improve that situation, but it isn't guaranteed. And because of all that uncertainty, just around the laptop models at a minimum, and the fact that I don't hear about any progression on the desktop higher core count variants I heard about last year, it does sound like Meteor Lake S is most likely canceled. Although it is weird that they just won't outright say it, right? And I actually think I have a hunch as to why Intel isn't completely confirming that Meteor Lake isn't coming to desktop yet. And I think it's because they don't quite know yet what the final clock speeds for Meteor Lake are going to be. Think about it. None of the sources I talk to are sure at the exact top clock speed Meteor Lake can hit yet. And the thing is, if Intel thinks there's any chance Meteor Lake can boost past 5.2 gigahertz, especially if they think they can get all of the cores to boost past like 4.5 gigahertz or something, then it would make sense for them to hold out hope they can launch some 6 plus 8 i5 to LGA 1851 desktop early next year. Because if they did, if it even hit 5.2 gigahertz, the higher IPC would make it a gaming upgrade over Raptor Lake, and maybe they could just launch Meteor Lake i5s to desktop first, and then half a year, or maybe a little less than half a year later, they could launch Arrow Lake higher IPC and core count models above it. But... If they find out, and I think they will probably make this judgment soon, that Meteor Lake can't get above 5 gigahertz easily, well, then there's probably no reason for them to launch Meteor Lake to desktop ever because the Raptor Lake refresh 
is actually probably going to beat it at absolutely everything while having good supply the entire time. And uh, yeah, I'm dancing around it. I have some new information about the Raptor Rake refresh that suggests that there is a chance it might actually be a decent boost that may actually allow them to hold the desktop crown this fall. And I'm going to talk about it. But first, an ad from Micro Center. It's March Madness at Micro Center, and they want to ask you what's good about having an amazing computer if you don't have a great monitor to go with it. Lucky for you, Micro Center has gone mad all March with their new Monitor Madness. Stop into a local store to check out the amazing deals they have on monitors. Like, for example, there's a link in the description to a 144 hertz, 31 and a half inch 4K MSI monitor for $500. Guys, Monitors have gotten cheap enough now, especially the high refresh 4K ones, that it isn't ridiculous to buy these over far more expensive TVs. And if you get a monitor and you need a new build, keep in mind that there's also a link in the description to $25 off all processors right now. That $25 off actually stacks with their free RAM deals, SSD deals, motherboard deals. And if you submit a picture of your build, you can get another $25 off on top of all of that as well. Just clicking on the links in the description really helps out Moore's Law is Dead a ton. So if you're interested in getting a new monitor or building a new build with a new CPU, click on the links in the description to help the channel and also get yourself a good discount today. All right. So like I outlined in the first half of this video, Meteor Lake does sound impressive for mobile if it can hit decent clock speeds and Arrow Lunar and Panther Lake all sound great, but they are ways out. Intel needs something this fall, and if they're canceling Meteor Lake, I think there's a lot of people that would go, they're basically screwed, but maybe they're not. How close can they get to Zen 4 X3D in gaming, and can they extend their multi-threading lead further? Well, according to some sources I talked to this week, the answer is actually maybe. So one source tells me that Raptor Lake Refresh does indeed launch quarter three or four of this year, but that they're not that excited around it. it. It's not like Granite Rapids or Meteor Lake, but it is an upgrade at least like Sky Lake to KB Lake. Another source tells me that they actually think Raptor Lake R can tread water against Ryzen 7000 better than most people are expecting. Although from this person's perspective, it's kind of like bragging that Comet Lake was semi-competitive against Zen 2 right before Zen 3 launched, because this person has no doubt that Zen 5 is going to be out before Arrow Lake, and so in reality, whatever Intel launches this fall is going to compete with Zen 5, and it's probably going to be similar to what happened with Intel with Comet Lake versus Zen 3, with no Rocket Lake to help the situation, although I might argue Rocket Lake didn't help the situation. But the third source tells me that there's actually a few things that Intel is doing to make Raptor Lake Refresh notably increase multi-threading performance. It includes better binning and voltage control and possibly even DLVR to make it a notable boost. Which, yeah, let me expand on what that last source said just a little bit. That last source mentioned DLVR, or a digital linear voltage regulator, on the Raptor Lake Silicon that, up until now, has been fused off. This has now been confirmed by ASUS. You see, this was a feature in Raptor Lake that, on its own, was supposed to bring up to a 25% power reduction. And now, before I continue, let me be very clear about this. I cannot personally yet confirm that Raptor Lake Refresh has that working now. But it does seem clear to me that based on what statements have been given to some of my sources by Intel, they've got something working to reduce power and increase multi-threading clock speeds. You see, right now, the i9-13900KS is incredibly handicapped by its insane power consumption. That's really the same power consumption overall as the i9-13900K, and it's causing it to really limit its all-core boost clocks. If Intel can, whether it's through better binning or some method of better controlling voltage, maybe with DLVR, which is possible here, then maybe they can get a small single threading performance boost, but then lower power consumption by 20% and then use that extra 20% budget to massively up long-term boost clocks with the same type of cooling. And yeah, so overall, here's what I'm going to say then after talking to those sources about Raptor Lake Refresh. 
I'm going to have a lot more information very soon. I've basically been ignoring this refresh because it just sounded so boring to me. And it is worth pointing out that most of the sources I speak to at Intel aren't that excited about this. They see this as something that's going to allow them to tread water. Some of them think it's just Skylake to KB Lake, but it's not that exciting. And overall, AMD's probably still going to have the advantage this fall. However, if they can raise single threading by up to 5%, although it's probably going to be less than that, and raise multi-threading by up to 10% or more, you can see a situation where Intel comes out this fall, decides to brand it as 14th gen and say, hey, it's the i9-14900K, or maybe they'll call it the 13990KS or something like they did with Haswell Devil's Canyon, and they will say, look, you got higher single threading again. We now roughly tie AMD's X3D products in some games, although other games we still lose by a mountain. Uh, but we did increase multi-threading by a notable amount, and so we just have the multi-threading crown. Yep, it's still going to use a lot more energy than Zen 4. Yep, they're probably going to want you to use 8,000 mega transfer DDR5 to get there. But I do think it's encouraging that they have something, anything to help themselves tread water against AMD this fall, because I honestly really think Intel needs it. I think they need to be able to claim that they're still trading blows with AMD, because I'm telling you guys, AMD is probably going to continue to keep Zen 4 incredibly aggressively priced through this fall's holiday season, and I do believe sub $200 AM5 motherboards are going to start to become very commonplace, and AMD is going to argue that these discounted Zen 4 models, like I'm, I'm sure they could afford to drop the 7950X to $500 this holiday season if they want to, they're going to give you that, they're going to say, look at this $150 AM5 motherboard, that's going to let you upgrade to Zen 6. So, in conclusion, I'm going to have more information soon, but right now, rest assured that Meteor Lake sounds impressive. It should come out in quarter four. It should be able to be competitive against Phoenix, although Dragon Range X, if that comes out, is going to wipe the floor multi-threading on laptop. And they do have some answer to AMD in desktop before Air Lake comes out, and I believe will be able to be competitive with Zen 5, at least in gaming. And that's good news. More competition is good. And uh, what's also good is that you made it this far in my video. But it's now about to be over. Thank you for watching my video. Please remember to like it, share it, tell your friends about the channel, and support our sponsors if you need any of their products. And also, please, if you have the extra money, consider supporting Moore's Law is Dead for 2 or $4 a month. Gets you access to a Discord, gets you early ad-free episodes of Broken Silicon, bonus episodes like Die Shrink that come out multiple times a month only for patrons. All of those don't have ads in the Patreon feeds. And you also get to ask guest questions. Hardware Unboxed is coming on to discuss all of the news coming out next week. If you want to ask him and me questions, support us on Patreon for just $2 a month to be able to do so. But otherwise, thank you for watching.